I think she's officially healthy, officially cleared. Let's get all the answers from royalty herself. King Casey O'Neill. There she is. Hello. How are you, Casey? Long Hi, time. Hello. I'm really good. How are you? I'm doing well. Long time no speak. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a rough year for me. How are you feeling? I'm 100% now, as you said. So I'm feeling much better. Um, back to training, back to fight camp, and just excited to you know, have a better year in 2023. So you're 100% cleared? Yeah. Wow. When did that happen? Um, about a month ago, I think now. So that was like seven months post-surgery. Pretty quick. Wow. I, uh, I just hammered out the rehab and did everything they told me to do and got better really quick. And um, yeah, I'm very excited to see what my new knee can do. Uh, was that the timeline that you were told initially? Because that seems awfully quick coming back from an ACL injury, right? Yeah, I was told nine months to a year, but uh, I was fast, so it's good. Okay, and so we have uh, seen reports that you're going to return on March 18th against Jennifer Maya. Yep. Is that accurate? Yeah, that's accurate. I haven't signed any contracts yet, but uh, that's the fight I asked for, and she said yes, so it looks like that's what's going to happen. Why did you ask for that one? I just think that that's a good fight for me. Um, Je Jessica I, who I was slated to fight in July, uh, was a former title challenger and into the top 10 rankings. So it's sort of the same thing. Jennifer Myers fought for the title um, and she's in the top 10 and she did better than Jessica I did in the title fight. So just like the next challenge that I want to give to myself is a girl who's like been there and done that and um, see how I go against them. Usually you come back from a break like this, an injury like this, you might want to ease into things, but this is arguably your toughest opponent. You don't yeah. want to ease into things? No. I think that taking time off um, and going back to an easy fight will definitely stunt me and my growth a lot more than coming back and jumping straight back into the deep end. Um, and I don't believe that I've lost anything. I've come back to training and within a couple of weeks, I'm almost back to where I was. So I think that um, I'll be better by the time March comes around. I'm going to have... Um, a lot more to show than I did before and I'm hungrier than ever and I want it so bad and everyone's going to see that in, uh, in March. So um, this card is taking place in the UK, in London, March 18th. I thought maybe you'd return in Perth. Obviously you have the ties to Scotland as well, but mm -hmm. uh, did you, did you want to return in Perth or are you happy about this date? Well, the UK and um, Australia are both bucket list places that I want to fight, um, being born in Scotland and representing the UK and then living in Australia for half my life. Both are pretty important, but the March, I mean, the February card in Australia was just pushing it a little too much, I think. I feel like I wouldn't have been able to, you know, really test out my knee and everything and then start a camp. And uh, having an extra couple of weeks for the March card was a little bit more doable and still somewhere that I really, really want to fight. Plus, um, a lot of my family from Scotland who's never made it to a live fight of mine before is going to come. So oh. that's going to be super cool and really motivating for me. I love it. Um, how did you injure your knee? I was training for the Jessica fight. I was sparring and um, just like a really weird freak takedown sort of incident. And it just completely tore in half. Oof. And yeah, I was... It was pretty strange because like you don't actually feel a lot of pain when you tear it completely because nothing's holding on. Um, it's just gone. So you don't really feel like pain per se. So I thought I was going to be okay. And then the next day when I um, went to the PI and they'd done all the scans and stuff and they told me that it was like completely torn and that I was out, I really struggled to like come to terms with that. Like, uh, I think I tried to see four different doctors to try and get someone to clear me to still fight because I was like, there's no way, like, I'm fine. But um, ultimately, obviously, I wasn't fine and I listened to them and I'm grateful that I did now. I was a little bit sad straight after surgery that I'd had the surgery and regretted it. But uh, now that my knee is way stronger than it was before surgery, I'm pretty grateful that I went and got it done. Why were you sad after surgery? 
just like knowing that I had to set out, I felt like I'd really um, came into the UFC and built a really good name for myself and was on an active schedule, which I think we talked about before for the first time in my career, I was finally on an active schedule. I'd been trying so hard to fight more than twice a year before that and just never could really find opponents or anything. The Australia female pool is really small. So once I got into the UFC, I was like, I want to fight all the time. Um, I always stay in shape and stay ready, but maybe that hindered me a little bit because I never sort of take myself out of fight camp or before I never really took myself out. And I think that um, that's why I ended up injuring my knee, but just sitting on the sidelines for nine months or I mean, seven months in my case, but knowing that you can't do what you love to do and why I live in Vegas is to fight. So just being here and not really having anything to do kind of sucked. Um, would it be fair to say, like, were there some dark days? Were there, were there some depressing days? I can't imagine. I, I always think about that with a fighter. You're so active. You're so, you know, in shape and you, like, your, your, your whole life revolves around training, exercising, and then it all comes to a screeching halt. Just the body must be in shock from that. Right. And the mind as well. How was it for you? Yeah, I, I would say that was probably the most depressed I've ever felt in my entire life for um, probably like the first three months and then I would sort of pull myself out and then it went through waves of like really good days and bad days as you said um, because it's not like you have surgery and then you just get better on there's like things that like hold you up and I actually ended up having two different surgeries so oh. I had my first surgery and then um, sort of got back to normal and then a piece of the bone chip which they used to like sort of hold my ACL down came loose and was like floating on the top of my knee oh. and giving me a lot of problems. So I had to go back into surgery and get that pulled out. And then, yeah, so it wasn't like a smooth sort of thing, but uh, we're getting, we're like completely over the hump now and uh, getting into a better headspace and being back at training has been amazing and made me feel so much better. And I think that, a thing that I took away from the surgery was that life has to like have other things other than just training. Um, so that's been a good thing to learn and like start to find other things that I'm interested in and stuff like that. So it's been fun learning about myself. Yeah. has been fun. But, but um, now the quick recovery is even crazier. The fact that you went under the knife twice. Yeah. Bionic. Yeah. I'm not going to, like, and I've seen it done faster, so I'm not like the fastest one that I've, you know, seen people have like come back quicker, but pretty quick. And I'm proud of myself. I stuck to going to therapy twice a day wow. for a long, long time. And then I was also doing a lot of therapy exercises on my own and doing a lot of recovery stuff on my own too, so that I would come back um, super fast. Uh, did you stop watching MMA for a bit? Was it hard to watch MMA? No, I watched everything. I even, I think I actually started watching more than I wow. did before. Um, just because I couldn't sort of uh, train. But um, maybe like two months after surgery, my little sister came out here and had like sort of a fight camp for her, for her first ever fight. That helped a lot too, just seeing her and going and like helping her out every day and coaching her. Um, and then obviously she fought and she won. So that was awesome. Um, that helped a lot and just staying in the gym. And yeah, I think that watching fights actually helped me. Any truth to the rumor that uh, one of the silver linings to all of this was the fact that you can watch this show in its entirety twice a week as opposed to going to the gym. So you really were able to keep up with all the news. I actually listen driving to and from the gym every day. So wow, there you it go. It was different watching at home, but um, I still got most of the men, I would say. I appreciate that. Thank you. How is your sister doing? How many fights now? She's great. She's actually sitting on the couch oh. right over there. She's back for my camp. So um, she'll come to London with me and everything and be in my corner for the first time. Um, she only had the one fight. She's been looking for another fight. But uh, like I said, the Australia female fight pill is really small. So it's hard to fight consistently. Does she have a cool nickname too? Not yet. We're thinking of one. Maybe Prince? Or is that weird? Prince? Yeah. I don't know if she'd like that one. Oh. She's well, shaking her head. She okay. Like well, it. there's King, Prince. I don't know. Yeah. 
something like that now. We'll we'll figure something out. For all right, all right. Um, and of course, if she maybe needs, Casey something. If she needs any thug nose gear, of course, we're happy to uh, to oblige. She definitely, she would love that. I mean, what you, you've you know, one time you got mad at me. You sent me a very uh, a very aggressive text, thinking that I took you down. But in, in in actuality, I put you in the prime time spot. Every time we do an interview, there you are, right there. Like you have the best yeah. spot. You missed that part. So I jumped the gun on that one. I'm sorry. I had a fan message me and say that you took me down. So I was a little bit hurt because I thought we were, you know, friends. But yeah, it's all good. Everything is okay in the end. Are you happy with your position there? I mean, that is, in my opinion, that's a good that's, position. That's prime real estate. Yeah, I do like it. Any truth to the rumor now with the comeback, like you're going to try to up the ante, do something even more so to uh, make your presence felt? I'm not, I'm not against, you know, multiple pictures if we do multiple things. Is there, is there something on your mind that you'd like to do to show your allegiance to this program or do you think you've done enough? I mean, if you've got any ideas, I'm happy to listen to them. Okay. All right. I just didn't know if there were any repercussions for the stunt that, you know, you pulled last time. So no one got mad, right? I mean, if I just keep winning, then we can't really say anything. You're Teflon. Anything. You're untouchable. Exactly. I love how uh, Australian people, or at least people with Australian accents, say ideas. Ideas? Yeah, instead of ideas. <laughs> There's in the end. <laughs> I don't know. You don't know? I what? feel like it sounds the same as you, but I don't know. Or like, Idea. instead of saying no, you say ner. No, I don't say no oh. like that. <laughs> I say no. I think it's the Scottish bet that stops me. That's true. That's like, true. Like, like, Thank God for that. Yeah. Um, how do you feel about the state of the uh, the flyweights right now? Uh, there's a lot of people who think Valentina is, is ripe for the taking. Do you feel the same? Do you feel like maybe the next fight, someone's going to take her out? Do you, do, you, do, you, do you hope for, you know, uh, that she's able to keep the belt as long as you're, you're, you're climbing so that you could be the one to take her out? How do you feel about the state of the division? Yeah, I mean, I think it always takes a little while for a division to really grow in the USC. And I think that Flyweight's finally um, getting to that stage mm. where there's really exciting up-and-comers in the division as well. And uh, it's been fun to see and sit on the sidelines and just sort of map out who I'm going to be fighting next and when and stuff. So um, there's a couple of girls that will give her a really tough fight, but like you said, I would like to be the first one to take her out. So if she can hold on to it, that would be great. Um, we'll see who gets the next shot though. Like I coming back off my surgery, I do want to fight in the top 10 and fight hard girls, but I do want to have a couple of fights before I fight for the, um, the belt, maybe even a main event if I can get one, um, to try out five rounds and stuff. So if someone fights for it and gets her before me, then I just have to get them. And I think that would just make the division a lot more exciting. So you're not thinking title shot in 2023, probably 2024? Maybe. I'm trying to have three or four fights this year. So Whoa. let's see where the three or four take me. Wow. Uh, fighting in March, I mean, three or four fights, that would be quite the active schedule. Yeah, I'm ready to come back. I've been missing fighting and I hate just watching. I like being on the cards. So there's a lot of good cards coming up and it's going to be a big year for me. Um, also, I have seen uh, your tweets. You have jumped on the Buffalo Bills bandwagon, it seems. And uh, Well, I I do love Josh Allen. I'll say uh, that. I do love him. What's not to love? What's not to love? But you weren't always a Bills fan, right? You've recently jumped on the bandwagon. Yeah, I mean, I'm a Packers fan. I'm still a Packers fan, but uh, I just like Josh Allen. And then it's hard not to to root for them when they're winning. And then all the stuff that happened with Demar Hamlin, obviously. So wow, um, you really I follow like the NFL? Is this a, a a sport that you like? Um, I follow it. I've been following it a lot more since I've been injured too, because I've had a lot more time. So that's been fun. And my boyfriend is like a diehard Seahawks fan. So ah. being a Packers fan kind of rubs him the wrong way but i love it even more for that um and then obviously last weekend that was a weird weekend. one right you guys were jockeying for position yeah, yeah he sort of had the up on me so i wasn't too happy about that but it's all good uh why are you packers fan i just like aaron Rodgers too i'm more of like mm. a quarterback fan, i feel like i'm okay like i just like certain quarterbacks um but aaron Rodgers hasn't really been my favorite this season. He's kind of been a little bit of a sore loser, but yeah. Oh, Josh would never act like that, by the way. Yeah. So now that uh, the Packers are gone, you're fully Bill's mafia. 
Yeah, I want the Bills to win the Super Bowl oh this year. Oh my gosh. So. Oh. A lot of people were saying that you were rooting for the Bills just to curry favor with me, that you were trying to get in my good graces. Any truth to that? Who said that? I That's never what the heard people. That oh, yeah. People were saying, oh, of course you're a Bills fan. You're trying to, you know, get Ariel to be, you know, you know, supporting you publicly, all that stuff. So not, not, you're, you're, you're denying that. I mean, I guess I'm denying it, but like if it gets more favor with you, then that's yeah. good. I mean, it's a good choice. Uh, they've got a big game this yeah. weekend against the Miami Dolphins playoff game on Sunday. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll do good in that game for sure. You go to Raiders games too? No, I I actually only been to one game and it was the Seahawks game live. I like watching from the house better. Yeah, and are you yeah. a big Australian rules fan? No, I like the NRL in Australia, but not the AFL. Okay, um, do you, yeah. do you know about the Adelaide Crows? Um, a little bit, not really. I think they're an a AFL team. Oh, right? are they? So okay. I don't, I don't really follow AFL that much, or I don't really follow any of it anymore, to be honest. But when I was home, I used to watch the NRL. Okay. Or the state of origin. Well. Or the what? The state of what? The state of origin. It's like um, Queensland versus New South Wales. Three games a year. Wow. And I, uh, they play. It's like the best players from Queensland to play. Ugh, best players from New South Wales and they uh, best of three. Wow, I never even heard of this. When does this happen? Yeah. Um, June, usually, like the middle of the year. Okay. And yeah, it's always the same two watch. teams. Um, the players, like, obviously vary because it's like uh, people from Queensland, people from New South Wales and they um, have a team and then, yeah, okay. play each other. All right, so you're coming back March 18th, UK, O2 Arena, hopefully headlined by Leon Edwards versus Kamar Usman 3, though we haven't had an official confirmation of that. Uh, the rest of the division is on notice. You're 100%. You have a stronger knee. You're coming back in record time. Two surgeries. Didn't know about the second one. That's incredible. Your, your head is in a good spot physically, emotionally, mentally. You're in good spirits, and we're ready to resume yep. what we were doing back in uh, early 2022. Yeah, I think we're going to beat what we did in oh. early 2022 uh, going for it all this year. Okay. Welcome back. Very happy to see you back in uh, good health and spirits. And uh, I'm going to think about what we can do in, in, in the UK as an encore. I think that that would be, you know, I feel like it kind of makes sense, you know, expect it. Yeah, you just let me know and I'll, uh, I'll try and make it work. All right. Thank you, Casey. Welcome back. Thanks, Ariel. Thank you. There she is, King Casey O'Neill, returning on March 18th against Jennifer Maya.